Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to see how to invoke our external system from Postman. So it doesn't matter which system you are trying to connect with. The first step that you have to do is you have to authenticate yourself. Okay, so you want to make sure you are the right person who can make that call. Once you have authenticated yourself, then you'll be able to make any of those API calls. It doesn't matter you are, you are using Postman as the client or you're using another Salesforce application as the client or you're using another system as the client. It doesn't matter which client you're choosing, the steps remain the same. The first step is authenticating yourself and then the second step is then you can make your next call using the token from the pre previous authentication call. Time for a quick joke. What did the tomato say to the other tomato during a race? Catch up. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what we are going to do here is we need to connect Postman. We have to authenticate Postman to this external application. So what we're going to do here is we are first going to create a connected app in this external application where our source employee data is present. Once we create this connected app, you will be able to use this client ID and client secret through the postman and then postman will be able to authenticate. So in this video, we are going to create our connected app and this connected app is important because that is going to generate the client ID and the client secret, which we are going to share with whoever wants to connect with this external system. So if let's say another Salesforce org wants to connect to this org, we will be sharing our client ID client secret with them and they will be able to use that information to authenticate themselves. Similarly, we are giving the same information to Postman and then Postman will be able to authenticate and then Postman will be able to make the subsequent call. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create our connected app. So I'll go back to my Salesforce org. I'll go over to setup here and then we'll go to app manager so here I'll say app manager and then under apps, this is where you have to go app manager. And here you see a button to create a new connected app. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And here we can call this as employees HR system. This is our app name that we are creating and the email I'm going to use info at my tutorial rack and then enable the OAuth settings callback URL. Currently, I don't have any. I'm just going to go ahead and use doesn't matter in the case of postman. Okay, so we'll just keep it here. And then I'm going to choose full access. So that's going to be the first thing. Manage this user data APIs. I'm going to give a couple of permissions here. And then here, if you see scroll access content resources. So these four scopes are pretty good. And then we are going to hit the save. Now this will take a few minutes. We're going to go ahead and hit the continue here. And this whole creation is going to take up to 10 minutes. So in the meantime, you got your consumer secret and consumer key, right? So now we have to enter our verification code. So it has sent an email to our email account. So I'm going to use that. So if you go here and now I have received an email and this is what the verification code is. I'm going to use this verification code and verify. And you can see here, this is your consumer key and this is your consumer secret. Now from postman, first we need to authenticate ourselves. Okay. So what we're going to do is we will go over to postman here. And I have already created a new collection here and I'm going to create a new request. Okay. So I'm going to create a new request here. It's an HTTP request. And uh, first thing, the easiest way is I do have a curl command. Okay. So curl command will make it easy for me to get this whole request. Okay. So this is my curl command. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy this curl command and then I will go over to my postman and do an import here. And here I'm just going to paste this curl command. The curl command is self-explanatory. 
automatically what we're trying to do is we are using a call here and in the body we are sending all these parameters so this is a post call that we are doing to this particular url and you can see here you are sending your grant type which is password now we are going to add our consumer key so consumer key is nothing but this key so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and i'll paste it over here so this is my consumer key and then the next one is my consumer secret so i'll go back here and i'm going to copy this and over here i'll go back to postman and this is my consumer secret now i have to provide my username so the username is this this is my username and this is my password now your password and security token okay so either you have two options here either you can add ip restrictions to the profile then you don't have to create a security token or then otherwise you'll have to create a security token what i'm going to do is i'm going to add login ip ranges to my profile that way i don't have to add the security token with my password okay so what i'm going to do here is i'll go back and over here and i'll go over to the to the setup here and we will say profiles and uh, here i'll go to system admin profile because that's what i'm logged in as and over here we'll go look for ip so login IP ranges, this is what I'm going to add. I'm going to add a new IP range here. So if you add something like this, it will pretty much cover all the IP addresses of IPv4. So I'm just going to give the maximum limit here and then hit the save. Now, since I have added this login IP ranges, now I do not need to create a security token. And you will not be even able to create a security token because if you go here and if you go to settings and you go to here and try to do security token that link has gone okay that link will only be available if you do not have your login ip ranges okay so for that particular profile or you don't have it at the org level if you don't have it then you will be able to generate a security token sorry about jumping on to a different topic but this was also a very important tip here now going back to postman since i do not need security token i'm just going to add my password here and very simple password and then in the header all i'm doing is this pretty print nicely print and that's the header i'm passing and these are the rest of the parameters and this is a post call you see i have put the right password client id client secret is correct everything is correct but i am getting this authentication failure okay and if you go to the setup and if you see here login history and if you come down to the login history you will see has the call even made to this particular salesforce and you can see here you do get a remote access that means something has been trying to access the system remotely not directly logging in so there is a notification on this one but if you see here is there any error that you're getting so this is what it says login type it says username password flow disabled what has happened is since this is a brand new org Salesforce has come up with feature where they have disabled this username password flow by default. So in order to make it work, you have to enable this flow first. OK, so if you are enrolled in my previous course and if you are creating a brand new org and you're coming across the same error, then this is the way to resolve it. So how do you resolve it? You will go back. OAuth and open ID connect setting. So here you're going to say OAuth and open ID connect. And over here you can see this allow the OAuth username password flows. Now you are going to go ahead and hit allow here. Okay. So this is your on. And then what we're going to do is now if you try to go over to Postman and then if you try to make the same call you will get an access token and you actually got an access token so that means you have authenticated yourself now make sure you save this request we are going to call this as authenticating with employee hr app okay 
and we are going to add this to this particular collection okay so this is our first request that we have made which is we are just trying to authenticate ourselves we are using these parameters grant type client id client secret username password now if you have just created a connected app please wait about 10 to 15 minutes before you try to make this call through postman because you might get a different error or it will not even recognize you so make sure once you have created a connected app go for a coffee break or a tea break and then come back and try to test it using postman okay so just to make sure if you are creating a brand new org please go over to this oauth type in under your setup type in oauth and then go to oauth and open id connect settings and then make sure you allow this username password flow because as part of these new sandboxes salesforce has disabled this username password flow for security purposes but just because i'm we are using postman and we are trying to get this we have to enable it otherwise you will not be able to connect using postman through username password flow now what we have done is we have gotten this access token now we can make our next call which is to get our employee information so how do we do that very simple i also have so if i'm going to do here what i'm going to do is so now i will make another call here so i'm going to go ahead and hit the new and that's going to be another HTTP call and this is going to be a get call and we are going to use this okay we just have to replace the front portion but this is something we are going to be using so what is our org here so I'll go to the my domain here and we will fetch this value the domain URL and we will go to postman and this is our domain URL and then dot com slash services slash data slash s objects okay and I'm going to go slash this make sure you're not adding another slash and then what is your custom object API name so the custom object API name if I go here and if you look for employees this is our custom object API name I'm going to use that and then next to it I'm going to pass the record ID I'm not using the actual employee ID I'm using the Salesforce record ID so this particular is a standard API and you probably know every Salesforce object no matter it's a standard object or it's a custom object you will get a API from Salesforce you don't have to write a single line of code if other system needs to access then then all you need to do is you need to provide them this with your client ID and client secret and they will be able to authenticate and then they'll be able to connect to your API you don't even have to write an epics class or open it as a rest resource or something you don't have to do that all the standard and custom objects get a Salesforce API so here we are using this custom object and now I'm going to add the header here and the header I'm going to add is authorization and this is going to be bearer and the access token that I retrieved from this previous call so you can see here this is my previous call that I made employee source app and if I'm going to copy this access token and we will paste it next to make sure there is a space between bearer and your access token and then here you are going to provide a record id so we can go over to any of this employee record and fetch the record id so let's say we go ahead and uh, we do this all and let's pin this that way we don't have to keep going and this is the record id so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to use it in my postman and then hit the send now i'm expecting a full response okay so it gives me the URL to access the record. It gives me the ID. It has that EN number. Then it has first name, last name, salary, date of birth, employee ID. So it gives me all the information, but along with that, it has all the other data as well. Now, if you want to create your own custom API, you can write your code and you can 
create a custom API which takes in this employee ID, which is this one, and gives you only important information like your um, first name, last name, date of birth, etc. Let's say you don't want to expose salary, right? This is something that it's giving you everything. So let's say you just um, only want some important piece of information to be sent back then you can rewrite your own custom API and then that is going to return whatever you want it to return, okay? So that's up to you. If you wanna write a piece of code, go ahead. But if you want, you can actually call this API from our second Salesforce org that we're going to create. So now you have seen how you can use Postman to fetch the data from your employee HR data. There are two different systems. Postman is a different application. Salesforce org was a different application. And you were able to use Postman to retrieve data from your Salesforce application. So what did we do in this case? We need first step we did was authenticating ourselves. And the second step we did was we just called the API of that system and we were able to get the data we wanted. Now, in order to authenticate yourself, what you needed was client ID and client secret. And how did you get that is by creating a connected app. A quick summary, if you have just created your Salesforce org, now make sure you go over to OAuth and you enable that username password flow. Otherwise your connection with Postman will not work. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to see you in the next video. Till then, take care.